Today we're going to do a keto diet review. There's a lot of people wanting to do keto and they're interested in keto and they're getting success with keto, but there's different ways of doing it. There's healthy and there's unhealthy ways of doing it. So today we're going to talk about dirty keto. Is it a good idea and what is it? So the basic idea with keto is to cut back the carbohydrates so low that your body starts using fat more effectively. So when we look at the macronutrient distribution, we have roughly 75% of calories from fat, 20% from protein, and 5% or less from carbohydrates. So on clean keto, it would look something like this. And on dirty keto, it would look exactly the same. That's the macronutrients is what makes the principle of keto work. It's what cutting the carbs so low that the body has to start burning fat. It, it gets better because it needs the energy from somewhere. If you cut the carbs way back, fat's the next best thing. Why does it matter then if you get, if they're the same on the surface with the macronutrients, then why don't you just make it easy on yourself? Because the proponents of keto say that, you know, it, they're talking about doing it clean and strict, but there's, it's just so difficult. My, my life is busy, I don't have so much money. So with dirty keto, it's, it's convenient, I don't have to prepare as much, I can get some fast food if I'm in a pinch, I can just get, some, uh, get a hamburger and, and throw away the bun. There's certain processed foods that I can eat, it's cheaper, and they're saying, most of all, it still works. So what does that mean when we say it works? To most people, they're talking about weight loss. That's their, their goal is weight loss. So when they say it works, they're losing weight. Well, what's wrong with that? The problem is that we have come so far with so many doctors telling people that, oh, if you just lose the weight, your diabetes will go away and your knees will feel better and your back pain will go away and your chronic fatigue will go away if you just lose that weight. But it's not true because the weight is not the thing that caused those. We've started thinking this way and unsuspecting medical doctors just throw this advice out because they heard it so much themselves. But Weight does not cause those things. Weight is not the cause of anything. It's the result of imbalances in hormones and lifestyle. And how do we know this? Because thin people are not much healthier. It is true that people who are obese have more heart attacks and more diabetes and so forth, but thin people still have them. Thin people get heart attacks, they get strokes, they get cancer, they get rheumatoid arthritis and lupus and, and other autoimmune diseases. They get fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, and they even get type 2 diabetes. Weight is not the cause of any of this, it's the result of other factors. And the diseases are caused by deficiency. In my experience, these are the five top things that cause disease. One is nutritional deficiencies. If your body has to have something to function and you don't provide it, your body's gonna get sick. Uh, toxicity. Your body has a natural detox system, but if you overwhelm it, if you constantly pour on, bombard the body with toxins, whether they're from the environment or the food or the combination, it gets overwhelmed and you get sick. Uh, emotional stress is a huge component of disease because I've done lots of videos to explain those mechanisms, but essentially stress activates your fight flight system and shuts off your feed breed, your healing system. Disuse, use it or lose it. If you're a couch potato, if you don't use your body for much, it's going to degenerate and get degenerative diseases that of course are sped up by deficiency, toxicity, and stress. And the final component, insulin, is an enormous, a huge contributor to disease. It's involved in probably 90 to 95 percent of all degenerative disease, but it's not the only cause. It's, 
a contributing or maybe the major component of a lot of these diseases, but it's all these different factors that create the disease. So when you go and do keto and you start losing weight, the reason you're losing weight is you're reducing the body's production of insulin, which is a great thing, but you're potentially missing out on the other four, and if you do it really poorly, then you could even increase the deficiency and the toxicity and the stress on the body. I bet that once you've thought this through, and I talk to patients all the time, and I sit down and I do a consultation, and I talk about their health goals, and after we've talked about it for a while, everyone agrees that they wanna feel good, and they wanna feel good for a long time, they wanna work hard, they want to be able to retire and they want to be able to do something with their lives in those years of retirement. So weight loss is not the goal. Health and function and feeling good is the goal. We've just become so confused that we think weight loss and health are the same thing, but they're not. So some examples of clean versus dirty keto would be, clean would be grass-fed organic butter excellent source of food uh, versus margarine or something processed, some, some vegetable oil that has been harshly processed and deodorized and bleached, etc. That even if the food that it was made from was a healthy food originally, it's not healthy anymore because it's been destroyed. Extra virgin olive oil versus canola, same thing. Uh, one is a natural food and the other is a highly processed food that has been the nutrition, the properties that the food originally have is not there anymore. And I've done a, did a video on that very recently on uh, why processed food is bad. So look at that and understand more about the principles there because all of that applies to what we're talking about today as well. Stevia versus aspartame, they're both non-caloric sweeteners but stevia is a plant extract and aspartame is a neurotoxin. It's a th synthetic product that is developed based on pesticide technology. Grass-fed beef versus beef jerky. So grass-fed beef is a great food. Beef jerky may or may not be all right. If they did it perfectly healthy and they just dried it with some healthy spices, then it could still be all right as a backup or a snack but a lot of the beef jerky will have uh, monosodium glutamate and preservatives and artificial flavors and, and aromas and things like that. So just understand that it's not just how the food was from the beginning, it's what did they do to it to get it to where it is now. Uh, a lot of people want to fry something on occasion and you could do that even on a keto diet if you did a like a pan fried something. You could have a, a breading with, with nuts, for example, and you might want to use butter or coconut oil. If you go out to eat and it's fried, they're going to use the equivalent of a shortening. They're going to use either something that's been artificially saturated or hydrogenated, or they're going to use a vegetable oil or a peanut oil or something that has been altered to withstand high heat. And then they don't use it just once, they use it multiple, multiple times, and now it gets more and more toxic in the process. So is there a perfect way to do it? Am I doing it perfectly? I don't think there's such a thing, but the more we understand, the better we can do it. So I do most things organic. I do almost all animal products grass-fed and organic, but on occasion I'm traveling, I go out someplace, and then I do the best I can. So are you better off doing dirty than eating the standard American diet? Yeah, sure, because at least you're reducing insulin, but then you learn and you learn and you learn and you get better and better, and over time you figure out where can I find these things? Which one is the most important to get organic and grass-fed? And where can I source these? Where can I buy these things affordably? So as you practice, as you learn, as you ask for things in the stores, they become available. So five years ago, you wouldn't dream of going to Walmart for organic beef or grass-fed butter. 
and now they have them. They don't not just have them, but they have them at some of the best prices anywhere. So the world is changing and as you learn, as you ask for things that you get better at shopping, you'll get better and better and better. And will you ever get perfect? Probably not, but you get better and you do the best you can. So when people say that don't worry, just do keto any old way, then don't listen to them because I don't believe that your only goal is weight loss. I think that you want to feel good and be healthy in the long run. So please share this video and let us help people get this message out. Thanks for watching.